Hi! Thank you for being here today. I'm Jam Ablao from White Line Saver Corps. And we're here today to discuss you about the policies, guidelines, and laws in nursing informatics. So let's begin! It is important to be familiar with federal and state legislation governing patients' medical records. There are several laws designed to protect personal health information. Patients have the right to have the information shared with healthcare providers who will use it with discretion in the patient's best interest. If you have or are considering a career in health informatics, it is important to be aware of federal and state laws so that protected health information remains secure when stored and transmitted by electronic health record system. 1. The Privacy Act of 1974 The Privacy Act 1974 regulates information collected by the federal government and its agencies. The legislation allows citizens to know what information is collected about them, assure the veracity of that data, and obtain copies of the information. The Privacy Act provides protections to individuals in three primary ways. It provides individuals with 1. The right to request their records subject to Privacy Act exemptions. 2. The right to request a change to their records that are not accurate relevant, timely, or complete, and three, the right to be protected against unwarranted invasions of their privacy resulting from the collection, maintenance, use, and disclosure of their personal information. The Privacy Act requires that agencies collect only information that is relevant and necessary to carry out an agency function, maintain no secret records on individual, Explain at the time information is being collected, why it is needed, and how it will be used. Ensure that the records are used only for the reasons given, or seek the person's permission when another purpose for the records use is considered necessary or desirable. Provide adequate safeguards to protect the records from unauthorized access and disclose, and allow people to see the records kept on them and provide them with the opportunity to correct inaccuracies in their records. Number 2. Alcohol and Drug Abuse Patient Confidentiality The confidentiality of alcohol and drug abuse patient records rule allows for additional privacy in any federally assisted drug or alcohol abuse program. Identity Diagnosis and treatment are treated as confidential information. Patient impairment does not excuse release of confidential information. Every healthcare organization has a responsibility to itself, to its patients, and to the community at large to have good control of its information systems. Because the internal workings of healthcare rely on accurate and current data and information, Personal data about employees and patients must be kept safe and confidential. A corporate security plan is important to an organization. Maintaining confidentiality implies a trust of the individuals who handle that data and information. These healthcare workers ensure the privacy of this information and use it only for the purpose for which it was disclosed. Security policies must be explicit and well-defined. Confidentiality agreements should be reviewed and signed when starting employment and yearly thereafter. Breaches of security, confidentiality, or privacy should be addressed and resolved quickly. And the offender should be charged accordingly. Every lap should be treated openly and made an example for others to note. The informatics nurse may be involved in the investigation process and the writing of the policies and procedures. Number 3. Conditions for Coverage of Specialized Services by Suppliers The condition for coverage of specialized services by suppliers is part of Medicare laws that govern providers and requires that all PHI be kept confidential and protected against loss, destruction, or unauthorized use. 
This information requires the written approval of the patient before it is used or forwarded. Hospitals must protect this information against unauthorized use and current electronic health records allow for monitoring and securing data. Patients always have a right to access their records. An institution is allowed to charge as usual a customary fee for paper copy costs. These laws extend to home agencies and long-term care facilities. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian. I'm here to discuss the Institutional Review Boards. Two, the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organization. Three, Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health. Four, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. So let's start to discuss. One, institutional review boards are governed by state and federal laws and require informed written consent and data security and privacy. So what is institutional review boards all about? The goal and the purpose of this is to protect the data and information and promote the interest of patient and the public. Protecting and ensuring can promote more effective communication between physician and patient. Which is central for quality of care, enhanced autonomy, and preventing economic harm, embarrassment, and discrimination. Next, Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organization. So what it's all about. The Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organization CHCO, is a private organization that has been used since 1965 to accredit hospitals and facilities, which allowed for their participation in medicine and Medicare because prior to facility participation. CHCO has varying ability to control and determine rules related to patient care, several of which pertain to fight confidentiality. Okay, what it's all about. The role of Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations show are the one who ensure the safety and quality of care is committed to continually improving patient care and data. They observe, check and analyze accurately if the healthcare facilities delivering quality, safe care to the patient, which can reduce the risk of error or low quality of care. Let's talk about why protecting sensitive information is so important. Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act. So what is HITECH all about, huh? HITECH was part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. It strengthens HIPAA by expanding criminal consequences and civil penalties for five breaches and violations. HITEC also empowers state attorney general offices to enforce some HIPAA elements. HITEC enhancements include mandating certain notifications when an authorized disclosure occurs. IHS must notify HHS and affected individuals of five breaches media too, if it affects more than 500 people. Two, expanding privacy rules to entities that you work okay behalf of providers and insurers. That means contractors' business partners are responsible to. Three, providing audit traits of all electronic record disclosure. We have to keep track of everything we do with a patient's health information. Four, increasing penalties for violations. Civil monetary penalties increase to as much $50,000 per violations or $1.5 million per year. Just focus on me, we have another one. Huh? What is the last? HIPA. Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. So what is that? HIPAA covers health plans 
healthcare clearing houses, and healthcare providers that conduct certain electronic transactions. IHS is subject to laws governing health plans and healthcare providers. So what is the purpose of this? HIPAA's privacy rule protects the privacy of protected health information fine, whether electronic, on paper, or communicated orally. What HIPAA's main goal? Ensure privacy while maintaining access to quality health care. Guarantee patients access to their medical records and health information. Give people more control over how their protected health information is used. Provide a clear avenue of recourse if an individual's privacy is compromised. I'm Brian again, thank you for listening and watching. Hey everybody, it's me, Roselle. Let's talk about four more laws that guides nursing informatics. First, the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act of 2010 was set up to fundamentally change the way people are insured. Goals include lowering healthcare costs and making coverage accessible to previously uninsured people. The Affordable Care Act is formally known as the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act and commonly known as Obamacare. It enacted to ensure that all have access to affordable health insurance. It does this by offering consumer discounts or tax credits on government, sponsored health insurance plans, and by expanding the Medicaid assistance program to include more people who don't have it in their budgets to pay for health care. Next is the FIDATIA, or the Food and Drug Administration Safety and Innovation Act. The Food and Drug Administration Safety and Innovation Act, or the FIDATIA of 2012, resulted in the collaboration of the HHS, or the Department of Health and Human Services, and FDA, or the Food and Drug Administration, to recommend a regulatory framework for health IT to improve mobile applications and other means to promote patient safety and innovation in healthcare delivery. This law gives FDA the authority to collect user fees from industry to fund reviews of innovator drugs, medical devices, generic drugs, and biosimilar biologics. In short, this law gives FDA new authorities to help ensure the safety effectiveness and quality of drugs in the United States. Next is the MAHRA, or the Medicare Access and Cheap Reauthorization Act. The Medicare Access and Cheap, or the Children's Health Insurance Program, Reauthorization Act of 2015, is intended to ensure that physicians are paid fairly, that Medicare Part B costs are controlled, and that healthcare is improved. MAHRA is a law that significantly changed how the federal government pays physicians. Its ultimate goal is to improve overall patient health and to reward the practices that succeed in doing so while maintaining a lowering cost. Lastly, the 21st Century Cures Act. The 21st Century Cures Act, or the Cures Act, signed into law on December 13, 2016, is designed to help accelerate medical product development and bring new innovations and advances to patients who need them faster and more efficiently. It concerns may be grouped into three specific areas, the safety, efficacy, and sustainability of medical technology, medical ethics, and drug prices. The 21st Century Cures Act, do provides hope for patients and families, invest in research and innovation, supports development of new drugs and devices, and streamlines the approval process.